from the News Channel 5 Network, this is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line on this Thursday. An uh, interesting topic of conversation this morning that I think a lot of us could stand to learn a lot more about. I think there's a very good chance that many of you already have formed some type of an opinion on this. And, and so with that regard, we want to try to uh, maybe just uh, expand uh, what you know about the issue, whether or not it changes the way you think. I don't know. But uh, what we've seen in the news of late is a lot of the controversy over whether or not transgender athletes uh, should be able to compete in certain types of events and the question of competitiveness and whether or not it is fair if a transgender athlete does. We've seen some already cases happen that have caused some controversy and discussion. You may be familiar with uh, the Leah Thomas case, the, uh, the swimmer, Pennsylvania, University of Pennsylvania. She made history just a short while ago, becoming the first transgender women to win the NCAA swimming competition in Division One. And so the question came up, well, was that fair, um, or, you know, the, the competition? And was it a level field? And uh, a lot of people think um, it's not. Others say hey, there's scientific proof to the contrary. It should be allowed. Um, we're going to get into that. Take some of your phone calls, 737-7587, if you'd like to join in the conversation. I know for a lot of us, maybe, there's some confusion about how all this works and what the science is. I don't know if we'll be able to answer all of that for you today, but we'll try with a guest with us. Um, with us this morning is uh, Darren Johnson. It's very good to have you with us this morning. Thank you so much for having me here this morning. Sure. I really appreciate the opportunity for conversation about yeah. this important Just issues. Open the dialogue, right? Absolutely. And talk about. We should say right up front, you are a transgender athlete and community activist here in town. That's uh, you're a cyclist. That's right. That's right. You, okay. We've been racing some uh, in these hot, hot days yeah. that we've been having. A little early for us for having this hot, but we're out there trying to trying to get our race on. Okay. <laughs> well, all right. So let's start real broad based for people. Okay. The the understanding um, of what transgender is. Give us a little bit of your background so people can get a handle sure. on on you know when you decided to make this transition and what it's all about, what you identify as. Sure, uh, I pr appreciate, uh, appreciate those questions. Uh, like you said, I'm Darren Johnson, a community, community activist. I've been an active cyclist uh, since my early teens. And in a lot of ways, my athletic uh, self identity is really tied with the beginnings of my very first questions about myself uh, as not not jiving inside mm -hmm. uh, with what I was getting feedback from from the outside world right, right. that the inside, you were perceived as a man yeah exactly exactly and uh, around 10 11 12 uh, that that sense of discordance disconnection mm -hmm. between what i knew something was off from what people described me as what i was supposed to be in mm -hmm. the world and how i felt as this you know embodied person uh and i think that cycling uh, really came along at just the right time for me uh, to act as a place that I, where the focus was on what the body could do, mm -hmm. not what not what shape it was, not what clothes it wore. Right, all cyclists kind of wear the same the same mm -hmm. things, right? And it allowed me to kind of, if not move to this person, at least move to a place where it wasn't so important, and that. That is true, I think, for any type of athletic endeavor, right? Meaning, so you're saying judge the athlete based on what they can accomplish in their sport, gender or physicality, whatever, doesn't have a bearing. It should just be what you can do, what your talent level is, what your abilities are as an individual. I th I, what we see is, is that already in sports, all different types of bodies mm -hmm. participate in sports on a regular basis. The same, I'm going to date myself here, yeah. but the uh, a Muggsy Bogues yeah, I know played, in the same, played in the same league as uh, Shaquille O'Neal right. or a Manute Bolt. And we don't see that those uh, drastic, uh, drastic physical differences are worthy of 
creating some type of barrier to competition, people under such and such a height. Let me go with that and sure. let's just get to the heart of the issue that many people are discussing right now. Whether or not you, mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, the, but let's real quickly say that when you become a, a I guess a transgender athlete, at some point you start a transition hormonally to change, all right, because would you agree that testosterone, which is typically in men, not women, yeah. um, can provide more strength, make you a stronger individual? Well, it can give an advantage to having more testosterone. Well, I would say a couple of, couple of clarifying okay. points, clarifying right. points there. I, uh, women, uh, Folks who uh, were born identified as women at birth do have some level of testosterone mm -hmm. uh, in, in them. And so in sporting uh, situations, what you see is a uh, ceiling on how high that number can be, how high that t those testosterone numbers can be. Yeah. And in women, in, in women who have identified as women, who are identified by the outside world as mm -hmm. women, uh, we have already seen issues, even going by that criteria on, you know, anything above such and such a level either has to be attributed to doping mm -hmm. or to creating some type of intentional competition advantage. But there are just like all of us have variations on ourselves, there are variations in women on what natural level of testosterone they have. Yeah. And those, there are women who have identified as women since birth who have fallen afoul of those restrictions just by because what their body naturally, naturally. produces. And so okay. what this becomes, the question then becomes is what what are we use? Why are we policing in these ways? And what is that policing meant to do? All right, you made the example of Muggsy Bogues, who was an NBA player that was only about five three and made it. And and I see your point that he was able to do it, but he was a he with that level of testosterone. We know in the NBA, if a woman came along right now, and we do have a WNBA who was good enough or is as good as LeBron James, she would be in the NBA right now. There's no rule against an NBA team not having a woman on the team. There just has not. There have been a few tryouts over the years. I mean, it, it, the, the question would be if all of a sudden LeBron James decided he wanted to go become transgender and play in the WNBA, there is no question he would completely dominate. It wouldn't even be close. So, for a lot of people, <laughs> he's, he's, there's a lot of situations there where he completely dominates in the men's exactly. league. Exactly. So, so my I mean, point <laughs> is, my point is, you had Muggsy Bogues, but we haven't seen yet. And so, you would think that in general, because we don't have women making it to the NBA yet, and hopefully someday there will be one who does, it, it shows that there is a difference between the strength level. I'm not saying skill level; yeah. skills are still there, but in general, just the ability to jump, run, strength, and musculature between the NBA and the WNBA. And if you had NBA players identifying at some point and going through transition to be transgender and say, I'm going to play in the WNBA, you could see how that, I think, would not be fair. Well, I, I would say that uh, looking at something like the International Olympic Committee guidelines, which really mm -hmm. have a big trickle-down effect into all the member sports okay. uh, because folks want to be able to make it to the Olympics. They want to be able to compete in the Olympics. So the IOC generally has a uh, pretty strong uh, stamp on whatever, sort of whatever their, whatever their uh, position is. Earlier this year, they came out with a statement that said, while we know that we can't speak about what is going to be the right pathway for each individual sport. What we want to see is uh, sports creating pathways towards broader participation sure. across cis, cis, that is, one identifies as the same gender that they were identified as birth, cis just means same, and trans, particip and trans participation. Uh, and I was pretty hopeful about mm -hmm. that because it's you know that seems like a reasonable position to take because you're saying let the sports decide what we want to see is this goal of greater inclusion right. but let each individual sport decide what they feel will work best for that discipline 
However, what we have seen over the last few months is sports actually taking stricter and stricter, more and more restrictive stances towards trans participation uh, rather than uh, going by those International Olympic Committee guidelines. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that affects not just elite Olympic level athletes, it affects athletes like me who mm -hmm. uh, lose far, far, mm -hmm. far, far more mm -hmm. often than they win, right? Because the United States, I'm a racing cyclist, the United States Cycling Association follows the guidelines of the international body. And we know they allow, and there have been transgender athletes that have competed in recent Olympics. So, exactly. Listen, we'll take a break on that note, and when we come back, we can take some phone calls. Your thoughts on that idea, 737-7587, and maybe we can get into a little bit more about just the, the, the competitive fairness, and, and that's what, you know, it's just like if anyone starts doing steroids or something, it'll be tested, and that's an issue. If, is it fair, it, does it have a level playing field, and what's being done, and we should say, as folks go through um, you know, the transition, there is an addressing of the testosterone level yeah. over yeah. a period of time Absolutely. to try to level that field. Yeah. I think for many of us who make no judgments on your lifestyle yeah. or whatever, which I sure as heck don't, good for you, <laughs> all I'm interested in is having what we can have as even a playing field and fair in sport. I right. want it to be fair so we have a fair result. We'll get into more of that with our guest and your calls right after this. Stay with us.